You wouldn't find a more devoted father than Ripley Holden. Devoted to war. Exactly. This time, next year, you'll all be back for the opening of the Ripley Holden Casino Hotel! Let's live the dream! The dead man? Just there on the floor. Dead as Southport he was. Jayanne? He's finished with me by text. What are you gonna do? I'll start with Ripley's wife. I'm good with wives. Would you like to go for a drink with me? It's not possible. It's not what I'm here for. What is it he's done to upset you, exactly? He's shut the arcade, which means nobody makes any money. Not me, not you, not anybody. On a warm summer's evening, on a train bound for nowhere, I met up with a gambler. We were both too tired to sleep. So we took turns of staring out the window at the darkness till boredom overtook us and he began to speak. He said, son, I've made a life out of reading people's faces and knowing what the cards were by the way they held their eyes. So if you don't mind me saying, I can see you're out of this for a taste of your whiskey. Give you some advice. You got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. When the deal is done. Every gambler knows that the secret to surviving is knowing what to throw away, knowing what to keep. Cause every hand's a winner, and every hand's a loser. And the best that you can hope for is to die in your sleep. When he finished speaking, he turned back toward the window, crushed out his cigarette. Faded off to sleep And somewhere in the darkness The gambler, he broke even And in his final words I found An ace that I could keep You got to know when to hold them When to hold them Know when to fold them Know when to walk away Know when to run You never count your money when you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting when the deal is done. Thank you very much. Did you find out where he's getting his money? Not sure how that helps us build a case against him, sir. Live? Yeah? I want to know how desperate he is. Desperation leads to extreme behaviour. He's already lied up the victim being at the arcade opening, so he's covering something up. We'll be right there. The victim's mates have come forward and identified him, sir. Well, hey, that's what friends are for. Yeah. We'll pick up pastries on the way. Hey. I know it's a lot to ask in this town, but no icing for me, huh? Yeah? Where's the money coming from to pay for more machines? You know that investment money you transferred for me to pay me tax bill? Oh, don't tell me you spent it all on these. I've got private health care, I pay for me kids' education. I'm thinking, what are the government going to spend it on if I do pay it? Adventure holidays for kiddie fiddlers. But that doesn't mean you just keep pouring money into this place instead. I'm like those gamblers that come in here with just one tactic, forcing. You force a winning streak by gambling every win you have until you hit the jackpot. And does it ever work? Does if you're lucky. Hey, shouldn't you be at school? Oh, I've had a job interview. I've never doubted your wonderful commercial instincts, Ripley. That's why being your accountant is such a learning curve. However, uh, the fact remains you're not even open for business at the moment. Matter of time. Albright's gonna sort it. Friends in high places. Plan and permission come through any day now and... Dad, I really need a word. How are you doing, Ruth? Not good. I ate some onion by accident and now I'm paying the price. Well, try and think of it as an adventure. I just want to talk to you for a minute. Come on, then. Office. But I'm not paying JLo off if you've got her up to duff again. <laughs> um, the bloke, you know, who died. What about him? I saw him at the arcade opening night party with his mates. So? Well, you said you didn't. To that copper? 
You trying to make some sort of a point here? Not really. Let me help you. You think I'm lying to the police? I don't know. And if I'm lying to the police, I must have a reason. I'm not sure. Well, I do have a reason, as a matter of fact. Right. Do you know what it is? No. Never tell a cop or anything. Not even the time. Isn't that wrong? You want to know about right and wrong? Come on, I'll show you. Danny, meet Chantel. Now, it's my bet that Chantel's already blown a gyro on the machines. Am I right, love? Almost. Nearly. Sort of. Give her that. Well, before you do, you should know that that is Death Barry's pay packet. I don't get it. It's your decision. What? Well, either a kid doesn't eat or Death Barry here doesn't get paid. All you need to know is right from wrong. Chantel's a loser, bad, but that means that I can be a winner, good. And my family and friends and Death Barry here can share in my good fortune. It's called the trickle-down effect. There always has to be a loser. And I spend my life making sure that I'm not it. The right decision is the one that makes you a winner. Now, that's a decision. Can you live with that? This is just ever, you know? Big thing, big thing. I mean, we didn't even know Mark was missing till we saw the news. You didn't worry when he didn't show up at the guest house after your night out? No, not really. It was his stag night. What sort of a man was Mike Hooley? How do you mean? Well, um, funny, happy, depressed, a bit wild, safe, a good friend, a liar, a cheat, what? Well, you know. All of them, really. Help yourself to biscuits, lads. So, at what point in the evening's events did you and Mike part company? What we say here... Uh, does this fiancé have to know? I mean, like, if we tell you, does that make it legal and stuff? I thought the availability of pastry, snacks and light refreshments would indicate the informal nature of these proceedings. We can't use anything you say here in a court of law. Right, well... He said he was going to go off and buy a shag. This is last night of freedom, you know. Tradition and all that. Sure. Where would the institution of marriage be without tradition, huh? Is there a technical term for a fiancé who becomes widowed? Like pre widow, maybe. I'll try and find out. Groom's mates weren't exactly overcome with grief, were they? Maybe they were still in shock. Clearly they had a falling out on the stag night. Big enough falling out for a fight. Hmm. Big enough for them not to check up if he got home, all right? About him going off whoring. Possibly. So let me guess. I go and interview every whore in Blackpool, and you go and talk to Ripley's wife again? No. Not be a dereliction of my duty to leave you alone with a crowd of working girls. There's a surprise. You still at it? You know what that poor young man was, Ripley? A judgment. Just the three and now, is there? You're losing disciples faster than Jesus at the Last Supper. I think you know deep down inside that your days are numbered. Beware false prophets, boys. You know what I reckon? I reckon that lad's been killed by one of his mates. You know, been out on the piss, some joke gone wrong, tried to wake him up the morning after the night before, dead. They panicked and they put him in the arcade. Why would they put him in the arcade? Because they nicked some keys the night before. He never told me he had any keys stolen. Because I've already just noticed this morning. Oh, right. So what do you reckon, Danny, eh? Sound about right to you? You got a new boyfriend yet, Cheyenne? Danny, leave it, would you? 
Cheyenne, love. Come and finish your meal. Hey, you happy now? Oh, come on, Ripley. She should be able to laugh at herself. You got a match tomorrow? Well, what sort of answer is that? Facilities, you got at your place. You don't know you're born. New sports all gets finished next month. And how much did you chip him? Well, it's all tax deductible. Besides, they're gonna name it after me. <laughs> the Ripley Alden Sports Hall? Really? So what's with the first like last night's ball tip? It's a pity I'm giving up football. I thought money was tight. Hey, what is the time? What do you mean you're giving up football? Well, I'm no good at it. So, playing goal. Don't think you're gonna be spending more time wanking in your room. <laughs> How's the coffee? It's fine. Well, there's a surprise. I was beginning to think this was the town that Cappuccino forgot. This is all very nice. Well, I thought we should uh, meet on neutral territory. Didn't think you ladies would come if I invited you to visit the station. You're probably right. So, do you recall this gentleman? No. No. You sure? He wasn't a customer of yours? <laughs> a customer? Not heard it called that before. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you're a service industry worker, just like me. Thanks. So, this blonde bombshell didn't come and see you Tuesday night? No, I'd have remembered. Would you? I read mean, somewhere you never remember a client. Not how you protect your inner cell in a psychological suit of armour kind of thing. Except when they die, and it tends to stay with you. Who says he died? I heard someone died, and then I get invited to neutral ground and a policeman shows me a photo, so... The reason we wanted to talk to you, um, one of this gentleman's friends said he weren't looking for sex after they'd been to a strip club. Not the only working girl in Blackpool. Um, well, I can see that, but, um, he was seen around the flat you work from. He was, he didn't find me. You sure you want to tell me no, are you? Off the record? Yeah. It's your final answer? No. I've never seen him before in my life. Well, you're not very likely to see him in the future either. Not unless his parents invite you to the funeral. Come on, Ruth, just have a tidy round, will you? Look, you've got more rubbish than Goodison Park in there. Bloody hell. I come with good news. Forensics are about done here. You can reopen whenever you like. Well, about time. I hate seeing machines without a punter. It's like watching widows dancing on their own. Hmm. Always a poignant sight. <laughs> oh, and that list of key holders you promised me. No problem. Oh, but you know, I noticed I had a bunch of keys missing from the cupboard this morning. Oh, you noticed that this morning, did you? I was just about to call you. Front grill, door, and the alarm code was written on the key fob. Oh, somebody got lucky. Well, somebody always does. What makes the world go round? A key was missing all along. Well, I had 400 people in here the other night. Any one of them could have gone in the office and got those keys. You're telling me they stole the key on the off chance that they might need to dump a body sometime? You spoken to the anti-gambling crowd? Bloke called Allworth. He's always out there. Vegetarian. Pleasure dodger. Yeah, I did talk to Holworth, as a matter of fact. He has an alibi. Well, anyone can scare up an alibi, can't they? Can't they just? You'll be glad to know yours checks out. Jim Albright has vouched for you. Good. Pity you can't vouch for your son Danny, too. Why would he have to? I'm formally interviewing him tomorrow. Danny, I mean, not Albright. No, you're not talking to my son without me being there. That's why I'm giving you notice. 
so you can arrange the necessary legal representation. Oh, I'll be there myself, don't worry. Of course you will. Any good father would want to be. Hello again. Hello. I came to see you in your other life, uh, Samaritans. Yeah, yeah, I remember. The questions, man. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> so, what are you doing? There you go again. Questions, questions, questions. Oh, I I'm just shopping. Right. I see you like tofu, then. Yeah, I find it very adaptable mm. and nutritious. And uh, I don't like tofu. I just saw you in the supermarket and I came in and pretended to be shopping so that I had an excuse to contrive a second meeting with you. Why would you want to do that? Because I wondered if you were doing anything tonight. Uh, <laughs> I'm married. I thought I'd explain that to you. Well, you did, but you didn't explain if you were happy or not. And you're the man who's going to make me happy, are you? The man who I met because he came to Samaritans. I can see how that might have marked me down as... Suicidal? But at least you know what you're getting. And let's face it, you know, most men only reveal their true feelings just before they tell you they're leaving you, so... <laughs> it really, really wouldn't be a good idea. You know what? What? I have lived all my life doing the right thing. And there's something about you that tells me you have as well. Maybe just this once, you and me should do the wrong thing. It's not gonna happen. Okay, but if, if it was gonna happen, where would we meet? A bar called Funny Girls, 8.30. I, I, mean, I take on board exactly what you're saying, but I, the problem with the short run is that we can't make it pay once we've covered the advertising. Hello. Sorry, I'll, I'll be a moment. Hi. Where should we talk? I can't actually talk right now. Should we talk here or should we go somewhere more private? Really, it's a bad time. Oh, right! Like it wasn't a bad time for me when I got your text message. I'm sorry. I've got to go. Steve. When you lie in bed at night, what do you miss most? Whoa, 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 whoa! Cover yourself up, for God's sake. So can you see me now, then? Come on. I thought you might like to know that the police want to interview you tomorrow. Me? What about? Oh, that window you smashed in the park last summer. What do you think? The body's stupid. Why do they want to interview me? I'll be there. You've got nothing to worry about. Why do you need to be there? You know, they'll let you go through this on your own, do you? I'll be all right. Maybe it's better if you don't come. Well, your mother can't go. You know how emotional she gets. She shouldn't even know about this. OK. Let's 
going to be fine. You'd be so sure. Because we're going to black you up, call you Ali, and take it to the European Court of Human Rights. How do you think? I've been in deeper shit than this before, and I always find an answer. Always. What I do. Look where you're going. Hey, sit on that and sing Nessie Dorma. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what to tell you? Equipped for every occasion, we can't <laughs> lose. I think you need to find someone closer to your own age. Someone dull? You want someone different, and that's perfectly understandable. You know, maybe that's why you ended up with me. Yeah, but you're different to older men as well. Like your dad, you mean? Well, that's not so difficult. That's what freaked you out, isn't it? Meeting my dad? Didn't it? No, what freaked me out was meeting him again. What do you mean? I know your dad from years ago. But you can't. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I didn't recognise him at first. It was a long time ago. I haven't seen him since we were at school together. You and my dad were at school together? I don't believe it. I'm afraid so. It's a slightly different complexion of things, doesn't it? Well, it's a surprise. Yeah, of course it is, but... Well, that doesn't have to change anything between us. Don't you see? I can't look at you anymore without being reminded of that. what? Dad? The age difference, it's wrong, Cheyenne. It's brought it all home to me. We shouldn't be doing it. Well, I shouldn't be doing it. Steve, what is this about? Because you've never thought like this before. Well, I think like it now. And that's all that matters, isn't it? What I think now. You'll change your mind. <sighs> now you're beginning to sound like him. Sorry, Cheyenne, it's all over. Police are talking to all the girls. There's nothing to worry about. It was the bloke who talked to you called Carlisle. What difference does it make? Because he's the one to watch. He's slippery. They seem nice. Yeah, well, he's good at seeming anything you want him to be. Well, he brought coffee and pastries. Oh, well, that settles it then, eh? Let's make him head of the United Nations. You wouldn't think he was nice if you saw him. You're coming after my lad. Your lad? We interviewed him. When? First thing tomorrow. But well, what's it got to do with your lad? Nothing. He's doing it to get at me. Some people have no moral backbone. How is he? He's my son. Sharp as a tack. Nothing panics him. What are you doing? Well, I thought while we're here, I might as well collect the rent. dressed up for. Dad! <laughs> like he's really gonna notice. Well, I might just be doing it for myself. Oh, well, that's just about right in this family. That's what we all do everything for, isn't it? Ourselves. Look, I know you're upset about breaking up with Steve, but you can't carry on being like this. Here they are, my two favourite women in the world. Did you know you were messing up my life before I was even born? What have we done now? Hey, you been spending my money? What's that smell? What smell? On you, like rubber or something. Got a flat tire. Had to change it on the way home. Oh right. Are you having a shower? What? Well, like you said, I stink. What's with all the questions? Hey, you trying to distract me from all the money you spent? No, I just, I just thought my wardrobe needed a bit of sprucing up, you know. Well, I won't argue with that. I'm surprised the tramps weren't giving you donations when you did that soup run. Get any idea how embarrassing that was for me? Is this what we do now, Ripley? 
Unwrap an old argument and savour it all over again. Where are you going, anyway? I, d I don't know yet. Yeah, I'm meeting the girls. Right. Unless you want to take me out, of course. I mean, I could always cancel. Cupid, draw back your bow and let your hair flow straight to my lover's heart. For me, no, nobody else but me. Hey, hey, hey. Cupid, please hear my cry. Listen, I don't want to bother you, but I'm in distress. There's a danger of me losing all of my happiness. For I love a girl who doesn't know I exist. Oh, and this you can fix. So, Cupid, draw. I know between the both of us, her heart we can steal. Cupid, help me if you will. So, Cupid, draw back your bow and let your arrow flow straight to my lover's heart for me. No, nobody else but me. Hey, 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 Cupid, please hear my cry. It's a drag club. Yeah. Why is that a problem for you? No, not at all. I'm very secure with my transgender issues. I just thought we should go somewhere that my husband was never likely to set foot inside. Well, if that makes sense. Many times. If you get a hold after a nudge with two of a kind on a win line, then there's always a win if you spin. It's the oldest cheat going. I thought that was you. Oh, very good. Yeah, I want to tell you. I hope this isn't the only return we get for our investment. Oi, you two! The party's over. Come here. Oh, oh. Come on, empty your pockets. Chill, bro, your ass clock. Oh, what have we got here? A black and white minstrel? Empty your pockets. Is that it? I is innocent, man. Oh, look. You got a loose thread, Dred. I knew you two were strimmers the minute the clap dies on you. Now, you're paying attention. Oh! You're paying attention now. Now, stealing from me is one thing, but doing it badly, that's just insulting. Get over there with your friend. Now, hold hands. What? Hold hands. Go on, hold hands. Go on. That's it. Now, walk out the arcade and keep holding hands all the way. Go on. Keep them held. Worries <laughs> <laughs> me is all the thieves and chances you don't see. Ah, uh, Death Barry used to be an Indian tracker. He can sniff them out by 100 yards. Yeah, but it's another dent in the profits, isn't it? We're living in a leisure economy, Telly. We can't lose. We entertain each other and we gamble. Well, in this place, it's like 
church, like a cathedral. Well, it's hardly bursting at the seams, is it? I haven't been open five minutes. Look, if the punters don't show for this, what makes you think a casino hotel is going to work? Because it's a whole new concept in the gaming experience. I've read the brochure, Rick, but I just can't see how all this is going to happen. Terry, just leave it, eh? All I'm saying is I won't be building my high roller suite just yet. Will you stop talking like a tart? Shit! Bloody hell, Ripley. Are you all right, Terry? What's wrong with you, eh? I'm sorry, Terry. Hey, put it down to executive stress, eh? Come on. Temper on you. I'll do my job if you do yours. You can start by clearing my name, PC plug. I told you I've got nothing to do with the Hooli case. Who? Mike Hooli, the lad who died. Oh, well, you never told me you knew his name, didn't I? There's a bloke doing a Howard Jones impression down at Legends. Well, is it as good as your impression of a copper? What the hell's up with you? Your lot are interviewing my lad tomorrow. It's not my lot. Carlisle's pissing in the wind. He hasn't got anything on Danny. Remember who your mates are, Ripley. I'm trying. I'm really trying. So what's your secret? Oh, I don't have secrets. I'm trying to make life too complicated. You're married. Is that it? No. I was married once. Didn't work out. Should have seen those little telltale signs earlier. You know, the sort of thing. Or saying she hated me, leaving, marrying somebody else. You don't want to tell me that's fine. No, I do want to tell you. I want to tell you everything. I and mean, I want to know everything about you. Why is that? Are you writing a book? I feel like I've been waiting for you. For this. It's insane. <laughs>
So, what do you do? I'm a quantity surveyor. <laughs> now, is there a dollar sentence in the whole English language? It doesn't sound that bad. Oh, I think it does. What does your husband do? What do you want to know about for? Because he's with you and I want to know about you. Well, uh, he owns an amusement arcade. Really? Yeah, really. Is that it? Well, one day soon it's going to be a casino hotel. All right. What else do you want to know? Uh, where did you meet him? How many kids have you got? When did you fall out of love with him? Uh, <laughs> the Ritz, Manchester, 1984. He was a really good dancer. <laughs> Two kids, both teenagers. And I don't know if I have fallen out of love with him. Oh, you're here, aren't you? With me? Yeah, well, sometimes I love him and sometimes I don't, and I guess you just got me on a bad day. Does he love you? I don't know, he thinks he does. This is weird. Why are you so interested? Because I think you should be loved. Um... <sighs> I didn't come here tonight because I don't love my husband. I came here because I liked you. Because I thought I was the type of person that could do this. But I'm not. Could I hold your hand? Did you not hear what I just said? <laughs> Can I kiss you? Night, Barry. Night, Ruth. I never have a good night with what's going on in my insides. Go on, take it. It's just a few day passes sold by. I didn't jizz in it. And even if it did, God will protect you, right? Thanks. Where are you, mate? Not everyone's got my stamina. Are you having a hard time? Oh, I'm not quite walking through the Valley of Darkness, but one or two light bulbs are down. Well, God takes a personal interest in every one of us. Oh, yeah, well, that must be some file effects. <laughs> 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 So if you were me, how would you get back on speaking terms with God again? Well, you could try showing a little humility. All right. Humility. That humble enough for you. You know, I always feel better talking to you all. Uh, I'll give you that. Look what this is, Danny. It's a machine key. So what's a machine key? You put it in a fruit machine and the display tells you how much is in there. When it last paid out, stuff like that. Would it surprise you to know that we found this one in Mike Hooley's pocket? I don't know and that we've got witnesses to say that your dad approached the man answering Hooley's description at the arcade opening because he thought he was using a machine key. 
You knew how many chances tried the machine key trick, you know what a stupid question that is. But you did see Mike Hill at the arcade, didn't you, Danny? You told me. That's right. Couldn't miss him, you said. With peroxide hair like that. That's right. Except your dad could. Because your dad said he didn't see him at the arcade. No comment. I think you're a bit of a mess right now because you're trying to cover up for your dad. Aren't you, Danny? Hey? Stop harassing the boy. There was a fight in the early hours outside a nightclub called Romeo's. He's always fighting. It's like Jaro Day down at the post office in there. I think you were in that fight, Danny. No, I'd remember that. Well, then how else did you get the cuts and bruises on your hands and knuckles? Well, maybe I did have a fight, yeah. And was that fight with Mike Hooley? No. Are you sure? You didn't even know you were in a fight till I just reminded you. Danny could have been in that fight. Oh, I see. Why not? Because I put him in a taxi at midnight and sent him home when I found him drunk outside a nightclub. And why hasn't Danny told me that? Well, like you've just reminded him. He can't remember a thing about that night, eh? You stood there, and you heard me tell Carlisle I'd never seen Hooley in the arcade, and you told him you had. I tried to tell you that. You made it look like one of us got something to hide. Well, we have now. What's that supposed to mean? Well, why did you lie like that? Why did you say you'd put me in a taxi? I just dragged you out the deep end, and that's all the thanks I get. I'm sorry, I messed up, all right? I'm going to ask you now. Man to man, father to son. Do you remember it in that lad? No. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Now, you're not shitting me, are you? No, I'm not shitting you. Well, where are you? And the caller was very flattered by his attentions. But now she um, feels depressed because she knows whatever she does will make her unhappy. And is she going to see this man again? The caller? No, no, no. Oh, I think that's the right decision. I didn't think you were supposed to express an opinion. That's when I'm talking to callers, not my friends. Hmm? What do you think? I just think you should be careful. I mean, what do you know about this other man? Nothing. That's the attraction. Hi, it's me. Um... Uh, oh, are you leaving messages? Um, yeah, I'm really sorry that I ran away last night. Um, I was just wondering if you'd like to do the same thing again. The day, I mean, not the running away. Hello? Were you, were you just listening to all that? <laughs> no, I'd, I'd like to see you too. Yeah, I'd really like that. OK, yeah. Yeah, bye. Sir, I've just heard from pathology that the victim had taken a cocktail of drugs. If he scored them round here, we need to find out who from. We had an anonymous phone call this afternoon saying that the victim was seen heading for the White Cliff Flats behind Holden's Arcade in the early hours. I think this is before he died. Three of the hookers we interviewed work out the White Cliff Flats, and all of them deny having seen Mike Hooley. That's something to be said for your orthodox approach to police work, Blythe. Well, there's more. Guess who the landlord is? Ripley Holden. Better than that, his wife. His wife? What do you mean? What, well, do you think she knows the flats are being used for immoral purposes? Holden will be using the name as a tax dodge. I doubt the wife even knows that she owns the property. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Have you met her? We'll visit the flats in the morning. Oh, 
Hello, darling. Oh, not when you start. It's been a long day. You could try saying something nice to me. It was that time of year already. Take the chance while you still can. What's that supposed to mean? What if you walked out that door tonight and died? What if I died? Have you been on the herbal remedies again? What if this was your last chance to tell me you love me? Oh, you're messing about, aren't you? No. No, I'm not. Well, you want me to say something right now? Yeah. Something, you know, spontaneous. Like what? All right, what do you want to hear? Oh, well, I have to tell you. Oh, look, I can't be doing with your games right now, Natalie. That toothless old bugger, he's put his bus pass in a suspender belt. Dirty guess. Well, that's right, yeah. He doesn't appreciate the art like we do. She's an artist, Scarlett. Really seen her improve over the years. What is this? Strip idol? You're not a judge, Terry. You're just a drooler like the rest of us. I'm coaching her. See that? That's a move I suggested. That's a move every man in this place could have suggested to her. That's not coaching, Terry. It's foreplay. <laughs> hey, told you this would cheer you up. Yeah, it's doing me good. So now we're all relaxed. Perhaps you could tell me what Carlisle knows about me. Not this again. How did he know about me and the machine key? How did he know Danny had been in a fight before Danny did? Just lucky guesses. You do it all the time in interviews, see what sticks. So you don't think he's got someone tipping him off at all? What contacts has he got in this town? If you had an informant, I'd know about it. Oh, that's right. You would, wouldn't you? Sorry about that slap I gave you. Oh, forget it. No, no, it was out of order, you know. I just... Everything getting on top of me. Does Jim seem OK to you? Well, he always looks well. He's got that sunbed, hasn't he? No, I mean, all right in the end. Yeah. He seems a bit distracted to me. He's got a lot on his plate. Has he? What, like what? Money worries? A uh, secret? Uh, I don't follow you. I don't think we can trust him anymore. Jim? No, Tony Blair. Yes, Jim. But well, he's a mate. Is he? And now, welcome on stage once more, the lovely, the delicious Dina. Bloody hell. I don't believe this. I know that voice. I thought you'd be pleased. Pleased? <laughs> you know, you must have been switched at birth, boy, because you haven't got an ounce of my brain. It's just a job. What? How do you think it makes me look having you working in a place like this? You told me you worked in places like this when you were my age. Yes, I did. Exactly. But I didn't go to a posh bad school and have a 40 foot bedroom with full en suite facilities. I thought you'd be pleased. This is how it works, right? Dad works his bollocks off so son can do better than him. Not play records in a Tupney wank fest and get himself arrested in a murder case. No, 
But he said it's a murder case. Are you any idea what it's like to look at your own son and not have a single clue what makes him tick? Hey, got any idea what that's like? Hi. Why didn't you show up? I was thinking about what you were saying last night. I was worried you didn't really want to do this. Are you sure it was that? Are you sure it wasn't you just having second thoughts and then pretending you were doing the noble thing? Of course not. <sighs> well, you could have picked up the phone and told me. But well, I knew that if I did... You'd have to ask me to your hotel. And I don't know if either of us are ready for that yet. Oh. <sighs> right. Yeah, I get it now. Get what? <laughs> I used to know this man. And he would meet a woman, knock her off her feet, charm her, listen to her, wait till he was sure that she was hooked, and then he'd walk. It's not like that. Because, you see, the best thing for him was that first exciting spark. The promise, the hope. That's what he got off on. I didn't have you down as that kind of man. I'm holding back because I listened to what you said. I took you seriously. <laughs> that is great, Peter. <laughs> no, that is... Priceless. Natalie. Natalie. Would you care to tell me how you feel? Shaken. Yeah, me too. Because I finally realize what you've known all along. That this is nothing more than a nice little fantasy. Where'd you get to tonight? Funny girls. Oh. Ripley. What? Would you hold me? You know 
when you're depressed, don't you? You've been watching queers in dresses all night. Bound to feel dirty. Not exactly wholesome, is it? Mm, that'll be it. You must be right. Yeah. Do you remember when Cheyenne was little? She used to draw flowers on her legs in Byra. <laughs> Should have known then she'd go for blokes with tattoos. I was always so scared when Aaron and Danny were on. Hey, what's got you on this? I thought that when they grew up, everything would be all right. We are going to be all right, aren't we? Because we are. You OK now? I'm fine. Are you comfy like this? Yeah. Ripley. What? Can it not be about sex? Can it just be about holding me? Sure. Of course it can. 